Uh, the last thing I want to talk about real quick are plastics. Uh, plastics are generally considered amorphous solids, so they don't have this uh, well-defined crystal structure, um, but they're all over the place. So let's just give you kind of a little two-minute spiel on plastics. Uh, plastics are a polymer. A polymer is just something that's made out of repeating units. Right, and these repeating units are called monomers. So you take a bunch of monomers, string them together, and you've got a polymer. Uh, note that we uh, we ourselves have a lot of polymers inside of us. So for example, our DNA is a biopolymer, right? Um, so again, it's made out of these repeating units um, that extend. All of the proteins in our body are also polymers of the uh, amino acids that we have in there. So polymers aren't you know new or anything like that, um, but Plastics have really taken over the world. I mean, if you look around your room, I bet you can see plastics everywhere. So let's just kind of just briefly go um, over what they are. They're generally made out of organic compounds, so they're usually carbon-based. So this is ethylene. You can see it's a carbon-carbon double bond and then hydrogens everywhere else. If you polymerize this, um, you get rid of that double double bond and you use it to create more carbon-carbon bonds. And so it looks like this, where the squiggly lines on the end are this molecule repeating indefinitely. And then this is polyethylene, which is one of the more popular plastics. It's like, you know, um, your grocery bags, maybe like a jug of milk, that kind of thing. But you can see its structure is extremely simple, right? It's just um, basically just a long hydrocarbon chain. Uh, PVC, like PVC pipes, is polyvinyl chloride. And it's very similar to polyethylene, but if you think about it, they have a kind of pretty different properties. Really, the only difference between ethylene um, and then this uh, polyvinyl chloride monomer is that we have a chlorine now. And so when it polymerizes, um, one fourth of these hydrogens are transformed into chlorines. Another popular example is Teflon, right? That's all over the place now. Um, Teflon, we kind of already went over this, uh, is basically now, instead of having these hydrogens, we have these fluorines. These carbon fluorine bonds are extremely strong, which makes this plastic extremely strong. And then the fluorines are very small, very hard to polarize. So they tend to stick to one another and tend to not stick with anything else, basically. So that's what gives um, Teflon its non-stick properties. And, you know, Teflon, we think about as, um, you know, the lining of some pans, but Teflon is so much more than that. Um, you know, a lot of any kind of rain resistant clothing usually has Teflon in it. Um, you can find Teflon in just about everything. And so plastics, you know, when they're vented, I mean, they're just amazing. They're everywhere. Uh, and that's because they're cheap, they're useful, and they're highly modular. Right, you think about um, a plastic bag, very kind of flimsy. Anything about a PVC pipe, relatively hard, right? But they're both made out of plastics. They're both very cheap and easy to make. Um, and so that's kind of why they're everywhere. You can kind of uh, play around with the structure to uh, change its properties. And that's really the big part of chemistry and generally more so organic chemistry. Change the structure of your compound, the molecular structure, and then see what kind of large scale physical properties you get from the material. Of course, um, I'm sure as you guys know, there's a big problem with this. Um, plastics are everywhere. However, they're made of relatively strong bonds. And these strong bonds, especially like those found in Teflon, take a long amount of time to break down. Uh, which means that they kind of stay in our environment for a very long time. You know, fish and, you know, smaller creatures will eat it and then we'll eat the fish. So we've all got plastic in our blood. So obviously, you know, it's kind of a, um, you know, moral reason to, you know, think about, yeah, these plastics are really useful, but at what point um, does the harm they do overcount the usefulness? Um, if you take organic chemistry, you'll take, you'll learn more about polymers in OCHEM. It's a really cool field um, and one that employs pretty well as well.